Hey coach, welcome back to our channel. So today I want to talk about coaching licenses. Now something I get asked on a regular basis is do I need a coaching license to start a private training business? Now the official answer is no you don't, right? There isn't at this point a yet an actual official qualification or, or coaching license that you need in order to become a one-on-one -on -one or a small group uh, training specialist. Now, what I do is when I speak to coaches who ask me this question, I break it down in a couple of steps, right? The first one is what's more important than a license in for me is experience, right? So I would say number one is no, you don't need a coaching license, but you do need a lot of experience working with players from different ages and different abilities. Because once you start your, your business officially, you're going to have players from all levels that are going to come to your, your, your business looking for extra and supplemental training. So having experience working with players of different levels, what that does is that gives you more expertise about what each type of player needs, right? At this point in my coaching career, personally, I've worked with every single age group at the youth level out there. So I've worked with five-year-olds, I've worked with seven-year-olds, I've worked with nine-year-olds, 10, 11, and so on. So you as a trainer, you need to make sure that you have that experience before you get comfortable working with clients. So something I would recommend coaches all the well, every time I speak to them is make sure you have a good year's worth of experience, not just one year, two years, maybe about three years of, of experience studying and uh, working and actually, you know, working with players of different age groups. So that when you start to get your own clients, then you know, right, this player is nine years old. He's playing at a high level. This is what he needs. OK, so number one is experience, right? Experience, in my opinion, is 100 percent more important than a coaching qualification. Right. Ultimately, a license is a piece of paper. Anyone can get it. Right. But experience that, in my opinion, is priceless. OK, that's number one. Now, second, right, I know I've mentioned that it's not important, but if once you have um, experience, I think the next bit would be to get at least the basic qualification or basic license that gives you a little bit of an insight into working with teams. OK. What you need to remember is that a lot of the clients that are going to come to you, they play on teams. So you have to have some knowledge about what specific positions, what specific uh, strategies teams their teams play from the clients that you work with. Right. Because you have to then design your training based around how that player plays on this specific team. Right. So what coaching licenses do essentially is they don't really focus a lot on the individual type of training they focus more on how to train and coach groups right how to essentially coach teams so yes it's not important right and you don't need a coaching license in order to start an individual training business but it is i believe recommended because it gives you an insight into what coaches or what teams use or strategies they use that your clients are playing in those teams. OK, so if you're, for example, training a, a girl and she's a she's a striker on her team. Right. You've got to have some knowledge of where they play within the team. Right. Are they a striker that plays on the last uh, the last defender? Are they a striker that drops deep, right? How does the, the head coach of that team, what type of system do they use so that you can have an understanding of, right, you can picture it, okay, in a game situation, right, this is what the movements that I want you to make 
in order to be successful okay so essentially what coaching licenses do is they focus more on the team uh, specifics rather than the individual okay but again it's not a requirement it's not needed but it's always good to have it because it gives you extra knowledge of a team environment right so that's the second thing the third thing is once you have the experience you you get your basic coaching licenses the next bit is now working or learning from experienced individual skills trainers okay so something i did right before i started getting clients is i done some research on my local competitors and what they were doing what they were offering okay and what i did is i went to watch their sessions and i had a it gave me that that little activity that i did gave me an insight into exactly what that coach works on with their players right so you have to have knowledge of your local market what do what do players in your local area need that your local competitors aren't offering okay so what does this have to do with coaching qualifications is because if you don't go down the route of getting qualifications then you have to be knowledgeable about your local market right so what's what's the struggles what are the problems that you players within your local area are having that you can solve for them okay so i'm going to break it down again in three steps right the first one is we need to get experience working with players so a way i did i did it at the beginning when i first started coaching is i volunteered at local clubs a lot in my area and that allowed me to get in front of players get in front of parents and start working with players of different age groups. I remember when I first started, I was working with a, a U9 and a U12 uh, boys team. And those are two completely different age groups, which require two di di completely different types of coaching, right? And after I moved on from that club, then I went into a paid position and I started working with different age groups all across uh, the, my the, the company I was working with, right? And that gave me a lot of experience of what, what players of certain age groups require, what they need, and what type of coaching I should be um, implementing into my sessions, right? Now, second bit is once you have that experience, then I would recommend getting... Uh, a license right you don't have to go through the whole licensing uh, coaching licensing pyramid right but i would recommend maybe getting at least the foundations of the the coaching license so it might be the the level one two or three in whichever country you're in so that just gives you an extra bit of knowledge about uh, teams right what do teams uh, require because again you're going to be working with individual players who play on teams right so you you have to understand what type of systems of play coaches are using you know how players are training with their teams what is the focus right you've got to understand a little bit more about what what are the requirements for seven aside what are the requirements for nine aside what are the requirements for 11 aside uh, soccer in whichever country you're in Right, and the third one is learn from someone already in business. So as I mentioned at the beginning, what I did is I learned from my local competitors. Right, So I went to their sessions and I observed what they were specifically working with their players on. And what that helped me to do is, is I grabbed a lot of that data and I created my own program. Because okay? I noticed that right, one thing players were lacking in my area was confidence right confidence was not there it wasn't being touched on in training uh, in, in team environments there's just too many players on teams for coaches to focus on them individually right so also the confidence side was more the mental side how can i motivate players mentally inspire them uh, push them so that they build their confidence get repetition in the training sessions okay so 
give you an example. What I notice is, right, my competitors, all their sessions were in groups of 10 or 12 players. In my eyes, I thought, do you know what? That's too many players to give personalized attention, which meant that, right, what I needed to do, I need to create a program which makes the group smaller so I can focus on each individual personally and provide that extra value that my local competitors weren't, weren't doing at the time, right? And stuff like that doesn't require a coaching license. That just requires you to get out there, you know, research your local market, watch a hun well, watch loads and loads of uh, training sessions and just network with other uh, trainers to see what they're doing, you know, what struggles uh, they're, cl they're having with their clients and just learn more about your local market, okay? Now, if you want more one-on-one -on -one help, okay, visit the Candidly link in the description of this video. You can set up a free 15-minute call with me where we can jump on Zoom. I can learn a little bit more about your business, see where you are, see, see where you want to get to, right? If you don't want to do that, just send me a, an email directly to makemoneycoachingsports at gmail.com, okay? Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.